you guys. Long time no see. Long time no see. It's been a while. <laughs> but we are finally filming the video you all have been patiently waiting yeah, for. Yeah. The tour of the Crafty Condo. Yeah. We are officially, call, officially calling it the Crafty Condo. Yeah. I think that is a f just cool name for it. <laughs> well, let's get this video done. I hope you guys like it. Our truck is a 2019 Freightliner Cascadia, the newer body style. Has the same exact engine we had in the M2, which is a DD13 Detroit engine. But we in this truck, we have what's called the DT12, which is Detroit's own transmission, which the DT stands for Detroit Transmission, and then the 12 means it's a 12-speed. Our last truck was a 10-speed, so mm -hmm. we got a couple more gears to work with, but it, it's all the same. It works the same way as the other one did. It's fully automatic. It does all the shifting and everything for you, and I'll do a more in-depth video on that uh, in the future, kind of showing how it works and sh just kind of explain it how you shift it and all that stuff but yeah because like our last truck you can switch it into manual and shift it yourself you can you can we do have 410 horsepower in this truck we have 288 wheelbase it's funny it's sh <laughs> the wheelbase is shorter than our old truck it is. because since we have two axles in the rear now, the wheelbase is measured from the middle of the two axles. Mm -hmm. Whereas on our older truck, the wheelbase was measured from the center of the rear axle. Mm -hmm. So if we were to measure from the center of that rear axle, it would probably measure a little bit longer. But in our old truck, it was a 296 wheelbase. Mm -hmm. So Now I know a lot of people were thinking we were going to go with a Western Star, yeah. which we'll talk all about in another video why we chose to go with this truck versus the Western Star, which we love the Western real, Star. Real quick, the main reason is it's a shorter hood. Yeah. Now, they do make an... The Western Star we looked at at the Expo, which we were drooling over, was yeah, a yeah. 5700. Yeah. They make a 4700, which does have a shorter hood. Yeah, but... but it, we don't like that. Yeah, we didn't like that But we'll talk more much. about that later. This yeah, is all yeah. about this truck, right? Yeah. We do have an AA custom sleeper. It is 120 inches. Our last sleeper was a bolt sleeper, which was 96 inches. So we gained two more feet yep. in our sleeper, which, oh my gosh, makes a world of difference, which you'll see when we go inside. But yeah, let's kind of show you around the outside. We did some special things with the box on this truck. Yeah which we've been talking about or hinting about. So I know you guys are anxious to see it. So let's take a look around the truck and show you some things outside. Cool. So on this truck, we did get some uh, extra toolboxes. Uh, we got two toolboxes on each side under the sleeper. And then we also have two toolboxes back there that we'll show you once we get back there. This compartment right here goes, it's a pass-through compartment and it goes straight through to the sleeper on the inside. There's a cabinet on the inside and right here is basically under the sink. So we have all our like cleaning stuff like that. We have two 80 gallon tanks, which is the same exact that we had on our M2. We'll probably be filling these up a little bit more just cause we're get. I don't know the mileage yet. We're gonna have to see and we'll keep you guys updated on that. Now, since we got two extra feet on the sleeper, we had to take away two feet off of the box because the truck can only be about 40 feet long total. Not about, exactly 40 feet long. You can't go more than 40 feet long. So within that 40 feet, we had to take two feet away from the box add two feet to the sleeper. Now, we have five foot of space in this front part, and let me get this opened up for you. We have plenty of room to put two pallets. We have uh, low uh, E-tracks on the front and back. Now, one thing we are gonna do is add E-tracks to the bottom part, because if we ever have really short pallets, we need a way to be able to secure that. So putting knee tracks on the bottom, and we're probably gonna do that this weekend before we go get our first load, just so it's ready. But we did this and put this wall in so we can haul separate shipments. Now, sometimes with Landstar, uh, we can marry up shipments together. 
but a lot of times the cust uh, or the brokers or the customers they don't want their freight mingling with other freight you know so they don't want you moving other people's freight out of the way to get their freight out of the back and so we built this so we can haul two shipments at one time instead of just one so if any at any point we're able to find two shipments going the same direction we can put them in separate compartments one up front here one in the back and the customers would never know the difference or you know they they wouldn't worry about their shipments being intermingled with other customers so since we are dedicated you know when when a customer calls us to do a, a load they're getting exclusive use most of the time you know there's only like two trucks at landstar that have done this i've talked to one of them one time and he says it, it it's pretty good sometimes you know when, when it does work out it pays off pretty good because we can get two shipments going the same direction and if we get do that going cross country we get double pay so we'll see how it works we'll keep you guys updated on how that works and stuff this front part is five foot worth of space so and there's plenty of room in here on the for a forklift to go ahead and put a pallet up in there we also have a step here to make it easy to get up in and out that folds down just like that and then it, i've gotten up in there a couple of times it makes it really nice and safe to get into especially since it, it sticks out past the box some so you're not having to like hold on and ladder up you know you just step right up so and it's really easy to go in and out locks in there really well we opted for a twin screw instead of a the front being a lift axle main reason is this truck is so heavy if this was a lift axle 90 percent of the time maybe even more it would be down all the time anyway and lift axles there there's more maintenance to them more problems can go wrong versus a twin screw so since the lift axle would be down all the time anyway we just opted for this less maintenance E easier to manage we got two flip placards and then a slip in placard we got that all the way around uh, we have more toolbox back here this one is a 48 inch wide and the one under the sleeper is a 36 inch wide so um, we keep i think most of our camping gear in this one we did go with the automatic jack stands again Heather absolutely loves these these things. Now this automatic jack stand is integrated with the lift gate, which is a pal finger. We did go with the pal finger again. We we liked it. It, it was a good good brand. Uh, they make a good product. And we what we really like about it is it's integrated together. So the hydraulic system for the landing gear also operates the lift gate. One thing we like that they did different on this truck, on the last truck, our controls were up under over here. This one, they turned the switches sideways and instead of flat upside down where you toggle back and forth front to back, this is up and down, which makes so much more sense because you push down, lift gate goes down. You push up, lift gate goes up. What a concept. But the lift gate is operated on this side this is a plug for the remote. You plug a long cable to it into there. And then when you're in the back, you can operate the lift gate. In the back of the truck, we have 15 feet of space, or I, I think it would be more like 14 and a half. We've got it pretty much set up. Most of our load bars and everything in front, we got our pallet jacks and straps and stuff. Now we can move that stuff to get more space if we need to. Now I'm probably gonna add a second shelf right below the blanket so we can stack all that stuff up there and get it up off the floor if we need to for any freight. We are not gonna polyurethane the floor again this time. It looked good and it lasted for a while, but it still got messed up really bad. These guys on their forklifts like to slide the freight for some reason, and I've been telling them to pick it up forever, and I'm just tired of doing that. So on our last truck, we rented a sander for like a hundred bucks, and we were able to sand the floor. So if we ever want to make this floor look good again, I think I'll just do that. Rent one of those sanders and clean it up with that. This truck does not have a translucent roof. It's an aluminum roof, which is quite a bit stronger than the translucent ones, 
but it does make it darker back here. We do have LED lights back there that are operated by a switch on the dash. Now our, our most important upgrade of all for this truck, of course, is the Crafty Trucker license plate cover. You know, I think that bling bling right there adds a nice little touch to it. Probably one of my favorite upgrades for the truck. We've had these for a while and we wanted to put them on the last truck, but the, the bumper here sat a little bit lower and we kept scraping our bumper when we back up to like parking spots and stuff. So this one should work a lot better. We got that from our favorite Australian, Wayne. Thank uh, you, Wayne. Yeah, <laughs> he made those uh, and sent them to us and we absolutely love them. Now we need to get some uh, logoing stuff that says Crafty Condo. Mm -hmm. The Crafty Condo, I love it. The lift gate is pretty much the same lift gate. Um, you know, same tail lights, uh, platform only lifts 3,500 pounds. The last lift gate was 4,500 pounds. So it's a little bit less, but never in the time ha have I ever, in my whole career of transportation since 2002, have I ever had to lift gate something that heavy. So 3,500 pounds is plenty for what we do and what I've mostly seen in expediting. The door opening is a little bit wider. The box is what's called a Morgan box. A lot of people ask why we go with the barn doors. Um, it's less maintenance than the roll-up doors. Those roll-up doors can be extremely problematic. I've had experience in the past with them where the spring breaks and you can't even open the door without that spring. It just, and then you get to a customer and you can't open the door. That's just, ugh. So these things are less maintenance. Um, it also adds a wider dimension and they weigh less, you know, just just a few th reasons why we we prefer the barn doors. It's a little bit more pain when you get to shippers because you got to stop before you back all the way up, get out, open the doors, back all the way up, pull forward, close the doors and all that. But we've never had a problem with them versus roll up doors. They have constant problems. There's maintenance. You got to grease the tracking and the wheels and it just pain in the butt. And then over here on this side is our landing gear switch, which is awesome. They put it on the driver's side this time. On our last truck, it was on the passenger side, but it makes it nice when you back up to a dock, you jump out the driver's side, you walk back here, lower the landing gear. So instead of having to walk all the way around the truck that way, uh, we have another 48 inch wide box tons of storage on this this truck we have four toolboxes total so um, i really really love the the storage on it of course we have a door on this side as well so we can load or unload from either side if we need to we went with the carrier comfort pro again it's a loud apu but i absolutely love this brand maintenance places that we can go to are plentiful parts are plentiful i can you know at pretty much in any major city i can find a carrier dealership or authorized dealer and get parts for this thing so i've learned how to work on it too over the time of i mean this is our third comfort pro we have one with our fleet owner and our old truck and then now this one it's noisy you know i mean that's the down, the one downfall that i've found to it it's only 6500 watts which for us, I mean, we've never really had a problem with it. Maybe during summertime, if you're running the rooftop air conditioner and then trying to cook at the same time, you can't do air conditioner, microwave, and cooktop all at the same time. But that's, you know, that's not a huge deal breaker for us. Our other 80 gallon tank, this is our shore power is on this side, which I really like. On the last truck, it was on the other side and we had to plug up, throw it under and get it to the shore power pole. So I like that, but they put the water fill on the other side. So I don't know, we, we may look into seeing if we can move that water fill over to this side too. It just makes sense to have everything on this side. Uh, this side is pretty much our power bank area, inverter, S-bar heater, uh, charge controller, transfer switches, um, pretty much the brains of the truck. So no storage in there. We store our uh, shore power plugs in here, our converters, or we have a uh, 30 amp to 110 or 120. 
Um, we got a 50 amp to 30 amp. So pretty much the brain of the truck, our secondary tank. We do have chicken lights, which Heather loves on this thing. These things are controlled by a separate switch inside. You got your DEF tank. This probably is my second favorite upgrade for this truck is inside here is our toilet. So this cassette, let me get this. You lift up this little latch, you slide that out and you go dump it in an appropriate dump station and then you slide it right back in. So you fill your flusher up right here. Um, you unscrew this, fill, put the hose in there and fill it up. You got this clear tube right here that shows your level of water on your flusher. Nice insulated door. So this is just a lot easier to go dump. With the last porta potty, we it took both of us to do it. Well, one of us could do it, but it was a real pain in the butt because you had to take it apart, set it up, crawl around it, or go out the other door, come around, dump it. Go. This is just so much easier. If one of us is sleeping and we could stop at a rest area or Flying J or wherever, and one of us can do this by ourselves. Love this. Another one of Heather's favorite features is this uh, porch light, I guess you would call it. When you open the door up, it turns on and lights up all of outside right here in the dark and a uh, really, really cool feature to have on it. So one of the other things we really love about this truck is the newer body style on the Cascadia, like Jason said. It just looks so beefy and cool, I think. Yeah, it does look pretty cool. This truck is so much bigger. Even though we had the same size engine, just the cab of the truck going from the M2 to the Cascadia is so much bigger. We sit up higher, It's we love it. But we also have the Crafty Trucker on our front license plate. Again, shout out to Wayne in Australia for making those for us and sending them. We love those so much and are glad we finally get to use those. On this truck, we do have the hood mirrors that came from the factory. With our last truck, we did not have those and Landstar requires us to have them, so we had to put them them on after the fact but these are the actual ones that come from the factory so it looks much uh, much cleaner and nicer than the last hood mirrors a couple other things I want to show you on the outside before we go inside I'm going to show you the water fill because we kind of skipped over that this is where we fill our fresh water and in this truck we have i believe we had it's 50 gallons worth of fresh water in our last truck it was only like 15 gallons huge difference it's a huge difference which we do have the shower now so that's gonna help on having enough water for that when we need to use it. So one other thing that we have on this truck that we did not have on the last truck is we have solar panels now. On top of the sleeper, we do have solar panel. We have 250 watt solar panel up there, which is gonna help in sunny days like this to keep the batteries charged. So I think that wraps up the outside. Let's go inside and see what we got in there. We are in the captain's seat right now. This thing is an absolute dream to drive. I love it. The M2 was great too, but this is just, it's like going from a F-150 to an F-450 with air ride in it. But we got, I believe it's ultra leather seats. They are heated and cooled. And one of my favorite parts is this adjusting. Whoops, I did it wrong. Go all the way down, then you click up to where you want them, and then when you're done, you just throw them out of the way. This is a lot of what took us so long getting this video out, was getting everything organized the way we want it. We have our Qualcomm mounted on the dash here that I used a RAM mount for. Got our GPS mounted. Couple upgrades I did was I converted the cigarette lighter plugs two USB plugs. So now we have four USB plugs here. Two of them are gonna be used for our cell phone charging. The other two are gonna be used for camera charging and stuff. We got adhesive RAM balls for the GPS. 
this is where I keep my iPhone or Apple Watch charger up here because I never forget to, I always forget to take it off. Another cool feature is I love all the steering wheel controls. Uh, you got your menu for the dash all here. You got your phone and hang up, which we will probably never use because we'll we always use Bluetooth headsets, but your cruise control, you can flash your lights, uh, let somebody know it's safe to get in front of you. Thank somebody for letting you know it was safe to get in front of them. The shifters, this is the dash right here. Um, somebody recommended that being a taco holder, so we got a taco for that. <laughs> <laughs> Another cool thing we picked up while we've been here waiting for a load is a wireless keyboard that works with the Qualcomm. Pretty standard stuff. We got Heather's uh, brake release eyeball there. All your standard switches and stuff. The seats are so much more comfortable than comfortableer, more comfortable than the M2 was. We have all kinds of controls up and down, left and right, side to side sway with the motion we got our cb this came with a cb in it and it does have dual antennas we have not had a chance to try this out yet but really good feature to have we don't use these all the time just because mostly all people ever do is complain on them but they're good to have when you're in bad weather and stuff we love all the storage in these things we got two glove boxes on both sides above the driver and passenger that you can we got bubble gum gopros <laughs> things like that and we got a bunch of storage up in here. Now we had the option to go with cabinets up here or just an open, open shelf. And as you see, we opted for the open shelf. We have, you know, our permit book up here. We got a few camera things. I got headlamp, uh, another GoPro. We got these cool little organizing things that we put stuff in and just odds and ends stuff, JB Weld, you know. Over here on this side, I got a bunch of cameras. I got my hats, my Bluetooth headset, sweatshirts, hats and stuff. Then over on this side, we got our doggy stuff, dog bags for picking up their poops and leashes and I think I got a couple more tripods over here. And this side is Heather's where she hangs her jackets, her hats, her Bluetooth. One really cool feature is these air vents right here. Whenever you're running the rooftop air conditioner, it goes through a whole venting system that goes through the roof. And let's say you stop, you're stop, you on a run, you stop for a 30 minute break and you shut the truck off. You come back here, start the generator, turn the air conditioning on, but then you close the curtains because you don't want the light interfering with the driver or whoever's sleeping back there. You got air conditioning up here too. So you're not sitting up front sweating your whatever off, and <laughs> sweating your tushy off. And, you know, um, just really cool feature to have up there. Um, I like how they integrated it with the sleeper part to add air conditioning up front here too. And of course you can close those off if you need to. Heather does a lot of her video editing up front. Now that is the outside and the front tour of the crafty condo. Now let's get to the part you guys really want to see. Welcome to the Crafty Condo. Well, we are inside the sleeper now. One of the biggest differences you're gonna see with this sleeper versus our last truck is we do have a lot more space. We've actually gained two foot of space since this is 120 inch. Our last one was a 96 inch. And let me tell you, in a small space, that two foot makes a world of difference. So let's just start from the front and work our way back. As you can see here, we do have a convection microwave oven. So that that means not only can we microwave, but we can also cook and bake things like an oven. It's just a convection oven, so it uses air circulation to move the heat around. Already used it a couple times, works great. Love the stainless. Oh, I know. Everything in here is stainless on the appliances. You'll see the colors as we go along. We did opt for a lighter color of vinyl. This is an off-white, and our cabinets are a gray color. A lot of times in the pictures we've been posting, some people think they look a little bluish, which 
They have a little bit of a blue undertone, but they are gray. I think it's just how the the picture comes out. I don't white, know. It doesn't white balance. Yeah. Stuff like that. Yeah. But we absolutely love the colors that that we picked out. It, it it's hard when you're there picking colors because all you're looking at is like a little thing of color, so you don't really know how it's gonna sh to look with the finished product. But I think it turned out amazing we love how it turned out anyway moving along so we have a, a big cabinet up here that's one of the things i love is all the cabinet space we have in here and i'm not going to open every cabinet and show you just because they're not totally organized yet but <laughs> just believe me we have tons of count of cabinet space underneath the microwave we have our tv we do have an in motion satellite dish and it also works off an antenna. So if you're in a local area, you can get local channels, but we absolutely love the satellite dish. We had that in our last truck. The only difference with this truck is it is now an in motion satellite, which means we, in theory, can watch TV going down the road if one of us is back here in the sleeper. Hypothetically speaking. Hypothetically, yeah. <laughs> we probably won't do that much, yeah. but we carried the stainless onto the backsplash, which is amazing. We love that. The countertop we picked out is a Corian countertop. We do have an induction cooktop built into the counter, which I absolutely love. I have used this a couple times. Works great. In our last truck, I had an induction cooktop, but it was a portable one. So this makes it really nice as being built into the countertop. We have a much larger sink than we had before. It's a lot deeper and it's a wider sink, which I was telling Jason last night, I actually think our countertop is a little, little bit deeper than what we had in the last truck. Maybe not much, but I think it's just a tad deeper and it's definitely a lot longer. <laughs> we do have a hot water heater in this truck. We have a sprayer now for the sink. We have the two windows on this side. Up here is where our satellite receiver is. This truck did come with a DVD player. We just took that out because we don't watch a lot of DVDs. If we wanna watch a movie, we'll usually get pay-per-view or buy it on our phone and watch it on the TV. So I put our printer here. Then again, along we have all these cabinets. I'll just open these so you just can kind of get an idea of the space that we have. I'm still working on organization, but yeah, tons of cabinet space. So we did have them put a spice rack in, which is uh, awesome. I love it. So, I've, you know, I've just put some odds and ends things, things that we use a lot of times. The one thing with this, though, the, the depth and I don't know, the this way and this way, a lot of spice bottles won't fit on there. I've found that these Trader Joe ones fit perfect. So with the extra spices that don't fit in there, like salt, pepper, whatever, I do keep in the drawer. As you can see, we have four drawers here. We do have a big cabinet here, which I have made into our pantry, if you can see that. So I keep a lot of our dried goods, canned foods, water in there. This is just like a fake drawer, but it does come out and you have a little container. I just keep my toothbrush and toothpaste in there. <laughs> we have this large cabinet under the sink, which is where the pass-through is that Jason showed you earlier. Coming along to the back of the sleeper is our bed. It's a Murphy bed, so it does go up into a dinette table, which I'll show you in a few minutes. But our bed is 48 inches by 78 inches. In our last truck, we had a 46 by 75. So we've gained two inches both ways on the mattress and it's made a big difference. As you can see, the babies love it. They're comfy. <laughs> Y'all aren't much help with this tour. <laughs> so we have all of our cabinets all along the back wall that wrap around. Again, I love all of this cabinet space. It's amazing. We do have a fantastic fan here, which we have switched out just the generic fan that was in there. And we put one that has an automatic rain cover on it, which if you hadn't seen, we did that in our last truck too. And we actually filmed the process. So I will link that up here if you would like to see how we did that in the last truck. It's the same way we did it in this truck. Yeah. So have a window on this side of the sleeper as well. Over on the wall there, we have some controllers. The top controller, it 
controls the heat and air when the truck is running down the road. The switch right, right below that is for the ceiling lights in the sleeper. Here we have another big, deep cabinet. That's where I keep all of our extra cooking stuff, like our Instant Pot, air fryer, all of that stuff, some dog food up there. We do have the same size fridge that we had in the last truck. And then we have another drawer down here, which is where I keep my pots and pans, which I love it. Here on this side of the of the sleeper is basically our whole control panel for the sleeper. We have our control that controls our rooftop air conditioner, which we do have a rooftop air. This also controls an electric heater that is under the bunk. We have our water heater, water pump, and our light to our shower. Yes, we have a shower. Our generator controller. This is the controller for the fan that's in the bathroom. We do have another controller for the new fan we put in. We just haven't mounted that yet. This is the controller for our SPAR heater, which yes, we do have an SPAR in this truck as well, which we absolutely love. And then this is the on and off for our inverter. Let's go in to one of the next things that we love about this truck, the bathroom. Here is our bathroom. As you can see, I'll just come right on in here. <laughs> we do have the shower now and a toilet, which we showed you on the outside how we empty that. But oh my gosh, we are so excited to finally have a bathroom and not have that porta potty sitting in the middle of the floor. But it does have a shower curtain. We just have that up out of the way right now. This also, as I said, has a fantastic fan. It's just a generic one that we are going to be replacing with the same kind we put out there that has a built-in rain cover. We love this shower. There is a drain. I just have a rug here for now, but there is the shower drain down there which does drain right out onto the floor. Yeah, so. it does drain right out. There's no gray tank for the shower. We got to be careful where we drain it. Yeah, because some places do not allow that. But yeah, we love this. One thing about the shower, since we, let me come out of the shower. <laughs> Since we did want the fridge, or I should say I wanted the stand-up fridge and not the under, under counter fridge, when we designed this, what they had to do is they had to take a couple inches out of the bathroom area to accommodate putting the fridge here with the stand-up fridge. But it's still plenty of room for us. Uh, this shower is actually bigger than the shower we have in the Airstream. Yes. We have not tried the shower yet. No but we're probably not going to use it a lot either right we're not going to be showering in it all the time we'll still be using truck stop showers but as you all know there's sometimes where we have to sit in secure hold areas where we have to stay with a load and we can't leave the truck so it's going to be nice when we have to do those kind of things to be able to shower when we need to and this isn't the kind of shower where you get in and take a long 30 minute shower it's a quick in and out kind of shower even though we do have a lot more water capacity you've got to be mindful you know of how long of a shower you're taking. And another reason we haven't tried it yet is because we wanna re the floor. It's got some weather stripping on there now, but Jason wants to really caulk it really good to make sure that that's nice and sealed before we use it because we don't want any water leaking under our floor or anything like that. Love it, and I love this thick door that it has on the shower. Now, if you look up here, I wanna show this sign that I got. One of our viewers, Becky, she's been following us for a while. She sent this to me a while back and I've been saving it because I knew it was gonna go perfect with the color scheme of the new truck. So I finally got that hung. So thank you for sending us that, Becky. We absolutely love it. Since we've pretty much seen everything in here, let me put the bed up and show you what the dinette looks like. All right, welcome to our dinette table. <laughs> so this is with the bed up. As you see, we still have a table just like the last one. We do want to try and use this more in this sleeper than we did the last one. Like 99% of the time in the last sleeper, the bed was down, which 
that's probably what it'll kind of be in this one but we do want to get more in the habit of being able to put the bed up and use the table whether we're eating or I'm editing just things like that just because we have so much more space and we love it so much this table has some cup holders that we didn't have in the last table as you can see right here but yeah that's the sleeper guys we absolutely love it so so much I mean, we could not be happier. Oh, we do have some lights in either corner here. I did forgot about those to turn those on, but each side has those lights as well. They're kind of reading lights, I guess, for if you're in bed. But yeah, I think that's pretty much it, guys. We love this sleeper. <laughs> that's the whole truck, guys. That is our home away from home. Oh, we absolutely love it. I know we probably said that 20 times in this video. Yeah. One thing we did want to mention and talk about is our load carrying capacity now. Yeah. Our gross vehicle weight rating is now 53,000. 53,000. A little over 53,000. We will never ever reach anywhere near that. No. Our last truck was 33,000. Yeah. So we've gained about 20,000 pounds gross vehicle weight. Now our load carrying capacity, what we can actually haul in the back. Our last truck, we did not like to go over 5,000 pounds. Yeah. In this truck, what are we going to be able to haul now? Um, we're going to limit it to about 12,000 pounds. Yeah. Now, to give you a little bit of uh, weight ratings per axle and stuff, uh, the front axle is rated to be 13,200. Our last truck was rated for that, but it wasn't registered at that. It was registered at 12,000 for the rear being 21,000, which gave us 33. This truck is actually registered for 13.2. So we can go up to 13.2 on this. Uh, tires, axles, everything on it is 13.2. On the front axle. On the front axle. Now on the rear axle, we have two 20,000 pound axles. So uh, extremely heavy duty, you know, it, it's, but per bridge law and tractor trailer guys know all about this, uh, you are not allowed to weigh any more than 34,000 pounds on tandem axles. So the front, we can go up to 13.2, but the rear axle cannot be over 34,000. And that's just per bridge law. So um, if you take the 13.2 plus the 34, that puts us at like 47.2. And when you when we weighed the truck, the truck complete with all our stuff in it, no load, we're low, our weight is like 30,000 pounds. Mm -hmm. Now, the rear of the truck could technically handle 16,000 pounds. If you take uh, what we weigh on our scale ticket, subtract the 34,000 that we're not allowed to go over, it gave us about 16,000 pounds. So, but I don't think I'll ever want to put that much weight in it. I think 12 will be the max. I, I don't even think we'll ever see 12. Yeah. Maybe one load a year, if that. So, yeah. yeah. Um, we're limiting it to 12. Um, we still have to be a little bit careful with uh, how we load it. If we put too much weight in the, the front section of the box and not enough in the back, that's going to add weight to the front axle. Um, our front axle with all of our stuff in it, I think we're about 12, eight. Yeah. 12,800 pounds. So we have about 400 pounds of wiggle room, which is pretty good. A lot more than we had on our old truck. But if I go sticking a thousand pounds or 1,500, 2,000 pounds in the front section of the box, that could add a lot of mm -hmm. weight to that front axle. So we'll have to be really careful sometimes with that. Yeah. And the majority of the time, most of the loads are going to go in the back section of the box. This front part that we have sectioned off, we're probably not going to use as much. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah, we'll just see how that, that plays out. We'll, yeah, of course, yeah. let you guys know it's a new thing for us. Not many people have done it in a straight truck, so we'll see how it works we're, out. We're going to see how it works out. Now, uh, last year, if you guys have been following us for a while, we're, we had got a load picking up in Nashville, Tennessee. It was right after the, the Mutz for Trucks event, and it was going to Portland, Oregon. Then we got a call before we even got to the pickup from another agent who had a load picking up in Nashville, Tennessee, going to Portland, Oregon, 
with a return coming back. We called the first agent that we had agreed to do the load for, and he said, no, he didn't want the stuff being mixed with his customer's freight, yada, yada. When we get to the drop-off, the customer's going to see the other freight in there and wonder what it is and all that stuff. And so our hopes is that with this split section, it separates the customer's freight. Yeah. We could have gotten that load yeah. because only doing that first load going from Tennessee to Portland, we may you know, maybe like four or $5,000 on it. But if we would have gotten that other load with it also returning, that would have done two things for us, got us back to a better area and double paid us mm -hmm. because we would have had a load coming back as well. So, I mean, we missed out on like a good seven, $8,000. Yeah. Yeah. So we'll see how it plays out. Hopefully. So, yeah. And, and we've yeah. had some agents kind of tell us to do this. Yeah. Yeah. So. We'll see. At worst case scenario, we can knock, get the wall taken out and seal up the sides yep. if it doesn't work out. Yep. So, yep. you know, we'll see. We'll see how it plays out. But we are so excited. We finally got to show you guys the truck. Yeah. We apologize it took so long. I mean, I know. I we had to get it ready, you know. We had to get it ready. I had a whole bunch of plans for a fancy video I wanted to do, but just things have just taken much longer than expected, which we're going to do a whole nother video about that. Yeah, we'll talk about this whole <laughs> process because this is a process yeah, but you know we at least wanted to get this done and up for you guys because I know y'all have been waiting and we've really wanted to y'all to see it it's the yeah, whole thing yeah. I think cool. that's it for now that's it. <laughs> do you have anything else to add no nope. all right thank you guys as always for watching and subscribing until our next video peace love and expediting